I want to talk to you today about the five types of sexual genocide. There are certain things that are perverted, I have them written out back here, and they are actually part of genocide. People think it's an alternative lifestyle. No, it's actually a clever deception of Satan to get people to sterilize themselves to eliminate them, eliminate them from the population. Let me show you what this five step system of the devil is. Inverted pentagram here representing Satan. We have genocide here. We have pornography, transgenderism, abortion, sodomy, and feminism. Um, I could probably add more to this list of sexual perversion that leads to genocide, leads to sterilization. But let me just go through the list here very quickly. First of all, you have pornography. Up here you have both young men and women, and they look at pictures of people, giving them a false impression of what the body should look like and whatever else, and they, and they see uh, other people out there that could be a partner for them that they could get married to. But because of pornography, they have this thing of, oh, it has to be this perfect model or whatever else, um, which leads to sterilization. That's what it does. And um, I heard an argument recently. They said that, you know, in the past, a young man looking through the window of some woman's house, watching her undress would be called viewerism or he's a peeping Tom or something. It'd be a criminal charge. But a young man can do it on his computer, watch a woman get undressed, and it's called a normal, healthy sexual behavior. No, it's perversion, and it leads to genocide. And, of course, what do you do when you look at pornography? You pleasure yourself, and therefore you are basically throwing away, uh, literally into the trash, uh, what is there to produce a child. It's terrible. Transgenderism. Um, now we have this whole thing to deal with. This is the new one, newest one of the perversions here. Transgenderism is saying that you are going to have a change where, you know, a physical, surgical change, and ultimately what does it do? It sterilizes. They take hormones for the opposite sex, and then they have actual uh, surgery to change who they are. And it does all kinds of mental damage to people. It's a terrible situation. Transgenderism. And they start to say, I'm not a man, I'm a, I want to identify as a woman, or a woman wants to identify as a man, or whatever else. Very terrible. And what, it is, what is it? It's a satanic deception. Satan is deceiving these people into thinking that they're the opposite gender when they're not. How about abortion? Abortion is another part of genocide. We've lost uh, hundreds of millions of babies through not only actual physical abortion, but abortifactants, uh, you know, uh, what do they call it, uh, birth control pills. How many of those children, you know, you'd say, well, maybe one of those children had the cure for cancer. They would have grown up to be a doctor that would have found the cure for cancer or some great invention or whatever else, but they were aborted because they just didn't fit into mommy's schedule. You see? And what has it done? It has taught young women you can go out and you can live a promiscuous life of fornication and if you have a child as a result, something doesn't go right with the birth control methods you're using, you just kill the child. It's not really a child. You're not with child. You're pregnant. Um, that's wrong. It's a child in there. It's not a fetus. It's a child. All right? Sodomy. Very obviously, it's genocide. You can't have two men produce a child. You can't have two women produce a child. They say, well, I was born this way. Not scientifically possible. If you are born as a sodomite, then that means that you have a gene in you that somehow, how did that gene get there? You didn't inherit it from your parents because your parents can't be sodomites. <laughs> so uh, evolution, even if you want to reject the Bible, evolution would say that sodomy is impossible. Unless you believe that there is some kind of a genetic trait that comes upon certain people that they're you know, destined for sterilization. It doesn't make any sense. Sodomy has been a big part of Satan's genocide agenda. A lot of people have killed themselves off and they are not able to have children through sodomy. And how about feminism? This is probably the one that goes back as far as a political movement. This one goes back to the women's suffrage movement. Women started to become transvestites, wear the vesture of men, cut their hair short like a man back in the 1920s. We want the equal rights with men and everything else. And eventually, you know what? We don't even need men. 
Well, if you don't need men, guess what? You're going to die. And I've known career women that were very successful, just shown that they're just as good as a man until they get old and then they don't have children and there's no one there. And I've known a couple of them that have come to their senses and they realize, I really messed up. There are no children. I have no grandchildren. The holidays come around. There's no one that comes. They go to the hospital. Nobody comes to see them. Most of their career contacts have died or moved or whatever else. Their friends, their society friends and whatever, they don't care. It's terrible. All five of these things will lead you to genocide, to people killing themselves. But I'm going to show you a couple of verses of Scripture here that talk about perversion in the Bible. The book of Leviticus, chapter 18 verse 22 through 30. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. There you have that, sodomy. Neither shalt thou lie with any beast to defile thyself therewith. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down there too. It is confusion. I didn't include bestiality up here, but it would be just another form of perversion that would lead to genocide. You're destroying yourself. You're destroying your health. You have not, you're not producing children. Again, how do you build a strong nation if you get rid of the traditional family? It's called the nuclear family or whatever. It's a family, a man and a wife, and they have children. The man works, the woman's there to guide the house. That's a good thing for a nation. You say, well, I'm against that. Well, then you're very foolish, very foolish. Verse 24, Defile not ye yourselves in any of these things, for in all these the nations are defiled which I cast out before you. And the land is defiled, therefore I do visit the iniquity thereof upon it, and the land itself vomiteth out her inhabitants, coming very soon. Um, out of a study, when God vomits, I suggest you watch that if you want more information on this thing of vomiting out its inhabitants. Um, quite frankly, I would be very shocked if America is in its same condition in, by the end of this year, 2024. I think we're going to see massive amounts of people die this year. Why? Because God is going to have the land vomit out the inhabitants. Verse 26, Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, and shall not commit any of these abominations, neither any of your own nation, nor any stranger that sojourneth among you. We have a lot of strangers in this country. Seven and a half million illegal aliens have been led into this country. They're strangers that are sojourning among us. And if they're bringing sexual perversion in, then they're going to die just like the wicked people in this country that are bringing it in. Um, verse 27, For all these abominations have the men of the land done which were before you, and the land is defiled, that the land spew not you out also when ye defile it, as it spewed out the nations that were before you. For whosoever shall commit any of these abominations, even the souls that commit them shall be cut off from among their people. Therefore shall ye keep mine ordinance, that ye commit not any one of these abominable customs which were committed before you, and that ye defile not yourselves therein. I am the Lord your God. God speaking to the nation of Israel here, but it's applicable to today as well. And I'm going to tell you right now, the Lord is going to put an end to the wicked people, to this wicked stuff right here in America. God's going to put an end to it. I will promise you that. And it's going to come very soon. Romans chapter 1. Now we'll go to the New Testament. If you want to say, well, that's just Old Testament and whatever excuses you want to come up with, well, then we'll go to the New Testament. Romans chapter 1. Um, beginning in verse 16. <clears throat> For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, right there, who hold the truth in unrighteousness. I was born this way. You don't understand. I have my rights as a woman. I can abort who I want to. I am just as good as a man. A little bit doesn't hurt to look at. I don't know what I am. I think I was born in the wrong kind of a body. <laughs> they hold the truth in unrighteousness. 
you see. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. God has shown you this stuff is wrong. This stuff is wicked. There is, it's not, well, sodomy just kind of came out and feminism just came out. We haven't been aborting babies for very long. And transgenderism, they, that's been going on for a little while. Pornography has been going on for a while. Look what's happened as a result. You can see the evil fruit of these horrible things behind me. You can see this nation is getting worse and worse. You're without excuse. Verse 20. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Right there you go. Um, I'm going to tell you a sure word of prophecy. Um, this system right here is going to be punished by God. I mean, it already is, basically. Thy known wickedness shall correct thee. You know, you're part of any of this stuff here. You're involved in genocide of yourself. So that is already a punishment of the Lord. But this, when this stuff happens in a nation, you're going to see this nation be destroyed. And very soon, the destruction is coming. You say, well, I'm going to go after you for hate speech. Then you're going to hasten the destruction. You go after a preacher of righteousness, God will actually bring the destruction that much quicker. So it's really up to you out there. If you want to make things worse and have more problems and things, then go after preachers, go after Christians and see where it gets you. Um, righteousness exalteth the nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. These sins back here behind me, it's a reproach to this nation. It isn't some kind of a golden age, a wonderful time that we're going into where now we can accept all this stuff back here and we, we're so much more enlightened. No, it's not. If this continues, these people continue, just forget what the Bible says, how the Bible's going to, how God's going to punish. If this continues, you have a nation, a nation of people that are sterilizing themselves. That's not good. That doesn't make for a healthy nation. Uh, you might want to check into the fact that there's a thing called BRICS. Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa. And India and China both have over a billion people living there. And they don't like us. We have 300-something million uh, people right now. 330, whatever it is, million people. And you have countries, two nations there, that have over a billion people. Three times as much each. And they're not going to be saying, okay, let's, let's just sterilize our people and whatever else. I mean, China's got some abortion stuff going on there. But my whole point is they could come and wipe us out. Other nations could come and wipe us out. We're not in a strong position right now. So if you're involved in this whole thing, think about what I'm saying. Take heed to what I'm saying. And you better get out of it while there's still time. Because there's not a lot of time left before God's judgment comes down. Please uh, listen to what I'm saying and understand I'm not coming from a position of hate, but rather of love, warning people that are part of this behind me here. Um, the media that's there, ironically, will display this very symbol, the inverted pentagram of Satanism. And there's a lot of people that are involved in the satanic system and they are promoting these things here. All of these, because they serve their devil, the master, their master of the devil. I suggest you get out of it while you still can. Thank you for watching.